Deep inside King Tut's tomb, past the golden shrines and famous mask, Howard Carter found two small plain coffins. Inside were the mummified remains of two baby girls, never born, never named, almost forgotten by history. They were stored away in a medical school for decades. But when scientists finally ran DNA tests on them in 2010, the results blew the lid off a 3,000-year-old mystery. This secret, hidden in their very genes, rewrote the history of Egypt's most famous dynasty. When Howard Carter breached the sealed doorway to King Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, the world was blinded by gold. The tomb contained over 5,000 priceless artifacts, golden chariots, intricate furniture, jewel-encrusted shrines, and the stunning solid gold burial mask. But amid all that glitter, some of the most important items were completely overlooked. Deep inside the treasury chamber, Carter found a simple wooden box. Inside were two miniature coffins built for bodies no bigger than dolls. Each tiny coffin held a second miniature coffin inside, gilded in gold foil. And wrapped in linen were the smallest mummies ever discovered. Not infants, but fetuses. The first was a female fetus, only about five months into pregnancy. The second was also female, estimated to be nearly full term, a baby girl who might have lived. This was human tragedy, tucked away amid a king's splendor. For decades, that's all it was. A sad footnote most people don't even know about. For almost a century, these tiny mummies were kept in storage at the Cairo School of Medicine. They were never displayed, never part of the glittering Tutankhamun exhibits that toured the world. But in 2008, Egypt's head of antiquities, Zahi Hawass, announced an ambitious plan, a brand new DNA lab targeting the royal mummies. The team would take samples from Tut's mummy, and, for the first time ever, from the two fetuses. Ancient DNA is incredibly hard to work with. It degrades over thousands of years, and contamination risk was huge. Some experts were openly critical, doubting the tests could produce real results. But the team went ahead, drilling into the dense bones of the tiny mummies. They were about to unlock a secret far bigger than they expected. To understand the secret, we need to understand the king himself. When scientists ran CT scans on Tut's mummy in 2005, they found a whole list of painful health problems. King Tut had a severe clubfoot. His left foot was badly twisted with necrotic tissue literally wasting away. He would have walked with a heavy, painful limp. Inside his tomb, Carter found over 130 walking canes. He was not riding the chariots, said study team member Karsten Push. Picture instead a frail, weak boy who had a club foot and who needed a cane to walk. The scans also showed he had a cleft palate and scoliosis. The DNA test in 2010 added the final piece. They found genetic material from the malaria parasite, the oldest genetic proof of malaria ever found. A 19-year-old boy already weakened by genetic ailments, suffering from a badly broken leg, suddenly gets severe malaria. It was a perfect storm that likely killed him. His queen was Anka Sanaman, his half-sister. They were married when he was just 9 or 10, and she was about 13, children given the throne of the most powerful empire on earth. The two mummified fetuses were their only known attempts to have an heir. Two pregnancies. One lost midway, the other lost at the very end. This wasn't just royal failure, it was deeply personal tragedy for a young couple. After Tut died, Anka Sinamun was left alone. A teenage widow in a court full of ambitious men. A desperate letter believed to be from her, sent to the king of the Hittites, reads, My husband has died, and I have no son. Send me one of your sons, and he shall be my husband. The Hittite prince, sent to marry her, vanished on the road to Egypt almost certainly eliminated. After that, Ankas and Amun disappears from history, likely forced to marry an advisor who became the next pharaoh. So why was this family so sick? The answer lay in the tomb of the man they tried to erase. The secret wasn't just about Tut, it was about his father, Akhenaten, one of the strangest figures in Egyptian history. Akhenaten did the unthinkable. He declared all Egypt's ancient gods were fake. There was only one true god, the Aten, the disk of the sun. He abandoned the ancient capital and built a brand new city in the middle of the desert called Akhenaten. The art from this period is bizarre. Akhenaten is shown with a long, thin face, skinny neck, pot belly, wide hips, and feminine features. His children are shown with strangely elongated heads. For decades, historians thought Akhenaten must have had some genetic condition. But here's the catch. In all this art, there are no sons recorded between Akhenaten and his famous queen Nefertiti. So where did King Tut come from? When Akhenaten died after 17 years, his revolution fell apart overnight. The priests grabbed the nine-year-old boy and forced him to change his name from Tutankhaten to Tutankhamun. They abandoned Amarna, and the desert swallowed it. Then they started a campaign to erase Akhenaten from history, tearing down temples, smashing statues, chiseling his name off monuments. For 3,000 years, it worked. The 2010 DNA study rewrote the family tree the pharaohs themselves had tried to destroy. 
The team tested 11 royal mummies. First, they confirmed the fetuses were Tutankhamun's daughters. The tragedy was confirmed. Then they identified his grandfather and grandmother. The father was indeed Akhenaten, the heretic king. Now the million dollar question, who was Tut's mother? They tested the younger lady, a nameless mummy found dumped on a floor. The results were shocking. The younger lady's DNA showed she was Akhenaten's sister. And then, the devastating final match, she was also Tutankhamun's mother. King Tut's parents were siblings. This was the royal secret. Tutankhamun was the product of a brother-sister union. Akhenaten had a child with his own full sister. The DNA didn't just find a name, it uncovered a nightmare that explained everything. All of King Tut's painful ailments suddenly made horrifying sense. The severe club foot, the 130 walking canes, the cleft palate, the scoliosis, these weren't random. They were the visible result of generations of intense inbreeding culminating in a brother-sister union. Married siblings pass on twin copies of harmful genes, leaving their children vulnerable to genetic defects. Perhaps Tut struggled until malaria added one strain too many to a body that could no longer carry the load. And the fetuses? The larger, near-full-term fetus showed signs of scoliosis and spinal deformity. The same genetic problems plaguing Tut were being passed on. This is why they couldn't have healthy children. The miscarriages weren't just sad, they were biological certainty. This is why the 18th dynasty, one of the most powerful periods in Egyptian history, completely collapsed. It ended with a genetically crippled boy king who couldn't walk, lived in constant pain, and was biologically incapable of producing an heir. The royal line literally crumbled from within, a victim of its own traditions. When Tut died, the throne passed to outsiders. And what did they do? They chiseled the names of Akhenaten, Ankhesenamun, and Tutankhamun from temple walls. They tore down monuments and used them as rubble. Historians always assumed this was about religion, backlash against Akhenaten's heresy. But what if it was more? What if the physical, visible decay of the royal family was seen as contamination, divine rot so profound it had to be purged? The secret Egypt tried to bury wasn't just a king who believed in one god. It was the devastating result of royal inbreeding, a family secret so dark it had to be chiseled off the walls. The DNA from those two tiny forgotten fetuses finally gave voice to a 3,300-year-old tragedy. King Tut's story isn't about gold or power. It's about a boy born into a genetic nightmare who lived in pain and died before his bloodline vanished forever. For a century, we were blinded by gold. We saw the mask, the chariots, and invented romantic stories. We were wrong. The real curse wasn't carved on tomb walls. It was written into every cell of Tutankhamun's body. The DNA finally solved the mystery, but revealed a truth far more tragic than anyone imagined. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think about King Tut in the comments. Also, hit the like button and share it with your friends. And also subscribe to see more videos like this.